everybody, it's Matt Fury from Avid here at NAB 2024. As you know, we're here on the show floor showing off all the latest and greatest from Avid, but also talking to some of our friends in the industry. One of those friends is Jane McKeever from Cal State Los Angeles. Uh, Jane, tell me a little bit about uh, the program you have at Cal State LA. Absolutely. Um, so we have been an ALP uh, partner since I think 2014. Is it Avid Learning Partner? Avid Learning Partner. So we've been a part of that program for almost a decade now. Um, we've been teaching the certification courses. We teach the 101 and 110 level certification. And something that we're looking to do in the future is expand that out into the 200 level um, certification courses as well. Um, we just recently reformatted uh, a lot of our curriculum. And and so we now have a production track and then a dedicated post-production track. Um, so looking at being a little bit more dedicated with our students as they go into the intermediate and advanced classes with focusing on picture and sound editing. Um, and something that we're doing with that is also bringing our um, AVID courses, AVID training into our lower division courses. So previously, the um, students would only work with Media Composer uh, when they got into intermediate and advanced courses. We're now moving that into their introductory lower division courses as well so that they're building a little bit more of a foundation throughout the program. Um, other things that we're looking to expand on right now as it aligns with our picture editing elements is color grading. So we're so one of the things we're really interested in at the show is starting to look at how we could um, upgrade some of our in, uh, in media composer color grading mm -hmm. elements. Um, and what else are we expanding on? Oh, we were recently um, working on building out a small finishing room, okay. which will have both color correction and post-production mixing, sound mixing in it as well, and are building out an Atmos system, so we're gonna be able to do very, very small Atmos mixes um, in that as well. So those are some of the things that we're working on. Well, that's actually, that's a lot. Um, yes. <laughs> so in, in addition to all the things you're doing at Cal State, any sort of trends in the industry? I know a lot of people have been talking about AI. I've been hearing that again and again. But are there certain uh, shifts in the industry, or again, the, I'll use the word trends, that you're uh, thinking about, paying attention to, trying to prepare yourselves for moving forward? Yeah, so AI is one that comes up. I'm still honestly doing my own research on that just to look at the ways in which it's going to interface in particular on the post-production side. Yeah. I think we see a lot of it um, being discussed on the production side um, and also on the writing side, of course. So looking at that um, and then also looking at um, a lot of virtual production right now. So that's something that we've seen a lot of at the show this year, something that we're interested in doing because one of the other um, arms of our department uh, is our journalism arm. Um, um, so looking at how uh, virtual production can work with fiction work as well as journalism or documentary work um, and where that will come into play with things that we would do with Avid would be in the post-production looking at how that changes uh, color grading, how that is something that we can start to look at some other things. So those are, those are trends that we're starting to look at. Okay, so being an educator, you're closer than anybody to the next generation workforce. Mm -hmm. um, you know, each with each incoming freshman class, any changes that you notice and in, in what they're aware of already or what their needs are coming into your program? Well, our program has some unique elements to it since we are a predominantly Latinx serving um, institution. We're 70% Latinx and a minor minority serving institution. Um, so, and often our students are first generation in terms of college attendance. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we are continuing to look at and see with our students is that they, they sometimes have some larger skills gaps when it comes to um, familiarity with computers, just in general, a lot of the sort of the those uh, skills and so what what we're doing to adapt for that is um, add in some foundational training right in their first year of the, the program and then getting them into some of the, the equipment quickly after that. Um, the other thing that we're seeing, interestingly enough, is like, so there's some, some things that they're not getting uh, access to in their high school experience, but the nature of the student that we tend to work with are very, in. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> They, they, they figure out how to get it done. Yeah. Um, and so they're doing a lot of production and post-production on their own using whatever they can get their hands on. So a lot of times it's less, it is sort of filling in those gaps with the equipment, but they already have a pretty good understanding of what it is that they want to try and do with it. And so our job is then to sort of help 
help sort of sculpt that way for them. Um, and then the other thing that is really amusingly and alarmingly for people who are sort of in my age group coming back is uh, some of the throwback technologies that are starting to resurface. Our students are really interested in mixed formats okay. um, and going back to like physical media. Like mm. tape has made a grand resurgence, which is very... I knew it was bound to happen. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I love it. That's what I learned on. So, so we're looking at how we can continue to sort of push forward with what companies are developing on the digital side and continuing to expand on. It's like, oh, but where could we sort of add some of this other stuff into it? Wow. Well, it sounds like you run a very rigorous program there. You're doing a lot of great work. Obviously, you're very busy here. Hopefully, you get to take a break somewhat while you're here, maybe? A little bit, because I did plan to come for almost the whole show. I got here on Sunday, and then I'll leave on Wednesday. So I'm able to sort of like meet with a couple of people a day and then go and have some fun and relax well, a little bit. I'm grateful you are able to carve out a few minutes to talk to us today. I learned a lot from talking to you. Hopefully, you did it as well at home. If you want to hear from more people here at NAB 2024, just stay tuned to Avid Social Media Channels. And thank you, Jane. Of course. Thank you so much. All right. We'll see you soon.